In this video, we're going to create a loading animation in Figma. This video is a part of a series on mobile app design, which was kicked off by this five hour masterclass completely free on YouTube, where we created all these components for our design system, as well as this prototype. These free courses on mobile app design are made possible by you. By purchasing the source files from my store, you're both saving time and supporting the channel, making these videos possible. So definitely go and check out the link in the description that will take you to my store, where you can download the source file for both what we create during this video and what we have created during the previous videos in this mobile app design playlist. And now let's get started. So the plan here is to create, so the plan here is to create an animated circle going back and forth in a container to show some kind of movement animation to serve as the loading animation, right? So this is going to be actually very simple for prototyping but we're gonna play around with the appearance to make this look really interesting and intriguing and turn this into an eye candy of sorts where the functionality is not the main point, but the main point is so that it actually looks good. So what I'm gonna do is use the key O on my keyboard and click once, and then I'm gonna shrink this circle to be about 24 points, right? And then with this selected, I'm going to press Shift A, which is going to create an auto layout around this circle. I'm then going to rename this to loading animation, right? I'm then going to grab this and expand it so that it's about 200 points wide. And I'm going to reduce the padding to two and two, right? Then I'm going to set the background for this container to be like gray and make the rounding, make it fully rounded essentially. Okay. And now we have this, basically we have this circle loading circle inside of the container that we're going to animate going back and forth. But before we do that, we want to make sure we get the appearance correct. So let me just create a section actually to work with a white background. And I am going to make this circle white for now, or maybe like purple. By the way, this is a pie chart that we have created in one of the previous videos. So definitely, definitely go check out the playlist in the description if you're interested. But first finish watching this, of course. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mimic the feeling of depth on the in this area. So what I'm going to do is go to effects and then select inner shadow. And I am going to select also clip content on this whole thing basically, so that we can play around with the spread, which is this feature right here. The spread is gonna be, I think about minus four, let's try that. And I'm gonna play around with the Y position and the blur to create something that reminds you of like, an actual dent in the surface. I'm then going to duplicate this effect and I'm going to change the eight on the Y axis to minus eight and change the color of the shadow to white. I'm going to maybe increase the opacity on that. So essentially what we want to do, we want to mimic the light going from, from the top and basically present or mimic the actual real world counterpart. So if this were an actual dent, if you were to shine light from the top, here is where you would see the shadow and here you would see the reflection of the light. Hence the shadow, the black transparent shadow, and then the light, that's going to be the white inner shadow, right? So that's just a bit of uh, spatial logic for you there. So that actually you understand why I'm doing this. Now that I look at this, actually, I think I am going to take this circle outside of this container, because as you can see, if I place it inside, it's going to be affected by this shadow. So I'm going to turn this back from auto layout to a regular frame. And I am then going to nest this loading animation into another frame, which is command option G. And then I'm going to take this circle and place it inside of the container frame 
rather than the actual background frame. Okay, and then I am going to rename this to loading animation container. And then this one, I'm going to rename that to loading animation background. All right. And now for this little circle, similar to what we did with this loading animation background, I'm going to actually copy these two inner shadows and paste that onto my circle onto my little bullet. I'm then going to switch the Y axis again, the values, because this bullet over here, that's not actually a dent anymore. The circle is basically extruded towards the user, right? So it's the reverse of this dent. It's like a bulge, right? So I also set this shadow to overlay and similar to the black shadow, it's going to be overlay as well. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to do drop shadow, which is going to be towards the right a little bit. And then towards the bottom, I'm going to blur it and I'm going to change the color to whatever is the color of the actual circle. I'm going to make it, sorry, not the color, but the drop shadow color. I'm going to make that darker, more opacity, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Maybe increase the blur and decrease the opacity inner shadow. We want to move that to the left a little bit to the right a little bit. And then this one to the left a little bit, just so that we move the shadows around a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is set the border radius to 15 on the container as well and click clip content. This is going to ensure that the shadow of this circle stays inside of the container, right? I maybe you want to increase the blur on the black shadow, right? And increase the blur on the white shadow as well in the background, right? So that we get this and to really make this look like a little, like a tiny ball, we're going to add a white color fill that's going to be a radial gradient, right, where the inside is going to be fully visible and the end fully transparent. So I'm going to swap these two, right, then I'm going to set that to overlay, decrease the width of the gradient, the height of the gradient and move it somewhere around here. And then increase the opacity so that we get something like that, a little light reflection, if you will. Okay, that's going to be positioned somewhere around here. And it really drives the point home that this is in fact a tiny loading ball, right? Maybe also increase the shadow of the circle, increase the blur, maybe do zero on the X axis. And yeah, I think this looks, I think this looks good. So how about we start actually prototyping this so that it is animated. So first let me turn this into a component and let me create a variant for this and these properties are going to be called state on the component and it's going to be start and then it's going to be end. And of course, at the end of the animation, this little ball is going to be all the way to the right, but with two points back to the left so that the padding is identical from all three sides. Now what I need to do is very simple. I'm just going to go to prototype, connect the first one to the second one and do after delay, which is like 800 milliseconds or maybe like 400, change to state end, smart animate, ease out. And this is going to be quite long. It's going to take 1500 milliseconds and it's going to be ease in and out actually. Okay. And then let me select the second one, connect that back to the first one again after delay 400 and 1500 and make sure it says smart animate everywhere. Now I'm just going to duplicate this component and I'm going to place that I'm going to place this somewhere close to our other animated components. You just command X, command V right below this one. And let me now launch the prototype. And here we go. Let me actually create a bit more space for this for this component. So actually, let me actually take this component back here. And let me type in text loading three dots This is gonna be body two, or maybe body one, where the three dots are going to be black, but transparent. And this is going to be an auto layout, it's going to have spacing of 16. 
I'm gonna rename this auto layout to loading animation container. And then I'm gonna make sure this is actually, well, it doesn't really matter what's the width because we can always adjust that. But in terms of the vertical padding, I'm gonna go for about 60 and then command X and place that here. And then fill container. And when I relaunch the prototype again, design system, here we go. This is a loading animation that is moving on its own and it looks like a little ball sliding inside of a dent. So again, very simple. You can, you have to just play around with the appearance, play around with the effects for a little while to get the exact result that you need. And these are the other animated components we have created in the previous videos. So definitely feel free to go and check out the playlist. And of course, check the link in the description to support the channel by purchasing the source file. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like and I will see you in the next one.